my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. On this last day of the year, before we begin the new year, in just an hour's time, we are all looking for peace. And that is why when we celebrate the Feast of Mary, the Mother of God, today we also celebrate the World Day for Peace. Peace is something that is long most in our hearts. Yet when we look around us, there is so much division and wars. We see that the world is in great turmoil in Hong Kong, in India. So in many places today, there is no peace. And if we look within our own lives, in our own families, there is also much division. Today, not only spouse do not understand each other, our children do not understand us anymore. We find it difficult to preserve the peace of family, peace in our offices. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, what is the way to peace? The only way to find peace in this life is that first and foremost, we need to see the face of God. If we cannot see the face of God, then we cannot find peace. Indeed, the cause of division in the world today is precisely because the world wants to remove the face of God from humanity, from this world. The world says that religion is the cause of division in the world. This is not quite true. All authentic religions, whether Islam, Buddhism, Christianity, and the rest, all true religion promotes peace, love for humanity, respect, tolerance. Perhaps it could be true. There are some fanatical religious leaders that are intolerant of people of other faith, but those are few. Generally speaking, most religious leaders, they promote peace and love for all, irrespective of race, language, and religion. And that is the reason why religions actually, they are very important to promote peace in the world. And so sometimes the state can help religions to live in harmony with one another. So the real cause of division in the world today is not so much the division caused by religions. It is the extreme form of secularism that brings about division in the world today. Many of us have been conditioned into thinking, and that is what the world has been conditioned into thinking that the only way to promote peace in the world is secularism. When we speak of secularism, I'm speaking of a secularism that is hostile towards all religions. In some countries, secularism is promoted in such a way that religions are marginalized and are not allowed to be practiced in public space. They want religion to be something that is very privatized. My dear brothers and sisters, what they want to do is to prevent humanity from encountering and seeing the face of God. But you just have to ask yourself, in the world today, those countries that are 
promoting secularism and excluding religions from public life, we just have to ask ourselves, have secularism really promotes unity in the world? On the contrary, those who advocate secularism, there is greater disunity in the world today. Simply why? Because when God is out of the picture, man has come to replace God. Without God in the picture, there is no more moral compass. What is the foundation of morality? Without religion, there is no more direction in terms of how we should live a righteous life. That's the reason why, because of secularism, the consequence is relativism. Since no one claims to know God, or that God does not exist, then every human person is now not too clear of whether he has the truth or he does not have the truth. That is why in relativism, there is no truth. Because no one knows the truth. And because no one knows the truth, it's very difficult for us to say that something is right or something is wrong. And that is the reason why today we cannot bring about any unity among ourselves because we cannot agree on even fundamental issues of what is marriage, of what is gender, of what is family, of what is the sacredness of life. Don't you realize that because of secularism and relativism, Today, the world normalizes, again, through the media, through entertainment, normalizes what is abnormal. What was considered evil is now normalized as something good and acceptable. Because when the media keeps on repeating and saying these things, after some time, we think that is normal. When you repeat it often, what is abnormal, what is evil, now becomes acceptable. Even Satanism today is promoted so widely in a good number of countries. In time to come, Satanism will also be seen as another religion that is acceptable by society. So, you know, my dear brothers and sisters, Secularism actually divides us. It doesn't unite us because we no longer have common values founded on truth. But what is worse is this. Because of secularism, many of us no longer lived our life with meaning and purpose because there is no more motivation in life. Why do you want to do good? Have you ever asked yourself? Is it purely because of humanitarian reasons that we do good? Or are we motivated because of something beyond just humanism? What is it that motivates us to sacrifice our life, our convenience, our pleasure of today for the rest of humanity. Precisely when we do not have hope for the future, when we do not have a hope beyond this life, then we just live for this life. And that is what the world is doing. That is why today the modern generation, they don't care about tomorrow because there is no tomorrow. There is only this life. So we better live and enjoy as much as you can. Because there is no tomorrow, there is no reason for us to sacrifice our life. Everybody, therefore, must try to grab as much as they can. 
enjoy as much as they can. Tomorrow's world is none of your business because you have only one life. Isn't it true that because we are believers, because we believe that there is a world hereafter, because there is life after death, this is what motivates us to live an honest life, to live a life of sacrifice, that even in our sufferings, we know that sufferings will end in happiness. Otherwise, there is no reason for us to persevere. Do you know what does the world fear most today? They fear death. That's why St. Paul tells us death is the wages of sin. They fear death because they think that with death, everything is finished. And that is the reason why people in the world they want to experience everything. They want to enjoy everything because with death, everything is over. There is no retribution. There is no punishment. There is no reward. There is no life after death. And so, you know, my dear brothers and sisters, the real challenge in the world today, you know, many of people today, they are concerned about climate warming which is important. But very often, as I have said, the real problem is not environmental ecology. It is the human ecology, the family ecology that is lacking. It's because the relationships among men and women are breaking apart. It is because the individual is wounded he comes from a broken family, a dysfunctional family, a family that is not holistic. When the person is wounded, the person becomes resentful, rebellious, and always skeptical and taking revenge on society. You look at the social media, how people respond to failures of their fellow men how people respond to things that they disagree with. They use all kinds of nasty, unimaginable words. Because a lot of anger are inside, deep within the human person. And so when the human ecology is not in order, why do people therefore care for the world. And so, you know, my dear brothers and sisters, you notice that all the three scripture readings, particularly the first reading, how did God, therefore, decides to bring peace to this world? Twice in the first reading, this was what the Lord said to Moses. He said, you must bless the sons of Israel. And how do you bless them? May the Lord let His face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord uncover His face to you and bring you peace. Twice, God asked Moses to bless the people that they will see the face of God. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, unless we see the face of God, we do not know who we are and we cannot see the face of man. That is why today when we celebrate the feast of Mary, the mother of God, what are we celebrating? It is not just Mary. What we are celebrating really, the feast of Mary, the mother of God, is to celebrate that Jesus is truly God and truly man. That is why this feast in honour of Mary is actually more in honour of our Lord. To make it clear that the baby Jesus that we worship at Christmas, he is not just a man, neither is he just God, but truly God and truly man. And so in Jesus, 
we see the face of God. That is why in St. John's Gospel, Jesus said, He who has seen me has seen the Father. And Jesus said, No one can come to the Father except through me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. So to see Jesus is really to see the mercy and the love of God in person. In seeing the face of God in Jesus, we begin to know who we are. That is why Jesus reveals to us not only who God is, but because He is truly man, He reveals to us our real identity. And that is what St. Paul tells us in today's second reading. St. Paul says, the proof that you are sons is that God has sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, the Spirit that Christ, Abba, Father. And it is this that makes you a son. It is in Jesus that we come to realize who we really are. We are not just an animal. We are not just a thing that exists in time and then disappears at the end of our life. We are sons and daughters of God. That is our identity. That is who we are called to be. Anyone who wants to live a meaningful life, therefore must be true to his identity, which is that of a share in the divine sonship of our Lord. And only because of this, that is why St. Paul says, you are no more a slave. A slave precisely because in the world, people are slaves because of the fear of death. With Jesus, he lived a life of love, of forgiveness, of mercy, of generosity. That is the kind of life that we are called to live. In living that kind of life, we come to know who we are and life finds its meaning. And even at the point of death, a true Christian, honestly, if you are a true Christian, eh, you should not fear death. Most of you fear death because you are still growing in faith. If you are a true Christian, death is not something that is the end of life. In fact, death is really the entry into fullness of life. And so, you know, my dear brothers and sisters, today when we celebrate the Feast of Mary, the Mother of God, we are celebrating also our identity as the brothers and sisters of our Lord. When Mary was proclaimed the Mother of God at the Council of Ephesus in 431, and this is how this feast is celebrated. Mary in the Council of Ephesus, the term Mother of God in Greek means Theotokos. It means Christ bearer. Mary was bearing Jesus, carrying Jesus, not just in her womb and in the flesh, but in her heart. And so it's very important for us. Today, if we want to bring peace in the world, then we must be conscious, like, like, like Mary, we are called to be Christ bearers. We are also called to be the Theotokos, so to speak. We are called to be the bearer of Christ to all that we meet each day. So on this feast of Mary, the mother of God, what is the greatest honour that we can do to honour our blessed mother? that we be Christ's bearer? Can we show the face of Jesus to our loved ones, to our family members? Do we show the face of Jesus to our office colleague? Do we give hope? Do we give meaning? Do we inspire people in the way we lived? 
And so, my dear brothers and sisters, this is our challenge. This is the message that the Lord wants each one of us to have. To be the face of God. So that when people see the face of God, then they will find hope and they will find their purpose in life. Amen.